G'day, fellas, and welcome to the future of China in Age of Empires 4. I'm about to show you guys a build order that will blow your mind. This is 100% the craziest Chinese build order that I've ever seen, that we've ever come up with. This one was worked on uh, by myself as well as Kenoki, and I'm incredibly excited to run you guys through it. So just by starting off, uh, going over what you see on your screen here, this is just a little flashcard just to give you an idea of where the build order is going to take you. So in age one, there's going to be a scout. There's going to be an imperial official. We're going to get wheelbarrow and we're going to be going for the boar. Uh, in age two, we're also going to be making a second imperial official. We're going to be getting double broad axe. We're going to be relying on the unique village uh, that is available to the Chinese. And then we're going to be going for a dynasty. Once we're in the dynasty, we're going to be looking at the Chokunu and making sure we get our plus one upgrades. This build order is based off the Guz build for the Rus, uh, and it is about taking map control. It's about taking the ball, but we'll talk more about that. And then finally, you've got two transitions, which we'll talk more about there. So let's get into it. We are watching a recorded game, but it, it is me with my POV, and I'm going to explain this build order to you as best I can. So five villagers start off going to a straggler tree. One comes out to this gold mine and drops a house as well as a, uh, a mining camp. Now, a second scout is being made from the town center, followed up by villagers. We're then going to drop a mill on this wood line here. It's important that when we do drop that mill, that all of those five villagers, you can see them there, they're going to be heading back to the town center and then moving out to the mill. One of them is going to build it, and then all the other three, are, or all the other four rather, are going to be going onto food. From here, we're going to rally all of our villagers uh, onto food. Now, this is where it starts to get a bit more complex, this build order. It is something that is very, very, uh, you're very, very active in the early game when you're playing this build order. And keep in mind, this is a viable build order against the Rus, where you would also have to be, you know, potentially killing deer, luring wolves, that sort of thing. And so it really starts to get quite heavy. So we're going up to eight villages on food for this mill. Uh, and this is going to enable us to build up a, a nice little uh, bit of uh, food bank because we're going to get an imperial official out and essentially what we're doing is we're looking to time our imperial official uh with our wheelbarrow so you can see right now that we're up to 120 gold um, and uh, our Imperial official is about to come out because it costs 50 gold now. This is the brand new patch where the Imperial official cost has been changed from 100 down to 50. So that's all you got to remember. Eight on food and then into the Imperial official. Imperial official is going to come out straight away and going to supervise that mill. At the same time, we're just looking around the map and we're looking for that central boar. The boar in the middle of the map, it sometimes doesn't spawn, but they've fixed up the maps recently and it spawns, in my experience, about 90% of the time. So now we're supervising that mill. We're going to use a little bit of uh, a little bit of magic here. So what you can do is you can actually force drop off at your mill and it's going to, in it, it's going to give you tax uh, every time you do that. Um, and so we're going to do that a little bit here, but next villager uh, after the imperial official goes out to that straggler tree from before and then the next one after that goes out to to gold and then after that we're back out over uh we're back out over to food uh but now picking up 40 gold from our mill immediately researching uh wheelbarrow so you can get this at about 210 if you do it well uh, i didn't do it particularly well so it came in at, i think about 215 and so now we're supervising that wheelbarrow and now once we've got that second villager out over onto gold uh that is when we're coming back to uh to food now i know that you guys will probably be watching this and be like this is crazy i can't keep up with it that's okay i'm gonna leave a link in the description to where you can find a bit of like an excel spreadsheet on exactly how to perform the build order because it, it genuinely changes the way that chinese will be played i'm incredibly excited to see where it takes us but now we're continuing to rally uh to the uh, mill but as soon as that wheelbarrow gets completed we're going to immediately collect the gold that comes in at the mill because with every tech that is researched at the mill or in any building for china you're going to get tax and so that's a really good spot for you to pick up all of that extra gold because your villagers now also have an extra five capacity that they have to fill and it gives you just a little bit of extra time uh so a bit of a mistake here coming in a bit late with our sheep but that's okay you can always go back over to berries if you need to but you can see that we're, we're running into a bit of a a little bit of a, a kerfuffle there now comes in for the Borbican timing. We, we talked about earlier the fact that we're going to be going for a boar in the early age, in the first age. And so what we're looking to do here is pull out eight villagers and we're going to be heading towards the middle of the map with them. We're waiting for three minutes 40. Once three minutes 40 hits, 
that is when we're going to tap everybody in on that mill and we're going to send them towards the middle of the map making sure we've got a scout nearby at the same time you can see that we've got 50 wood in the bank here this wood is going to be used for a lumber camp it's really important that we we use that wood for the lumber camp now you, you can it's probably better that you put it on a house first uh, i make a little bit of a mistake here uh, i will be real with you guys i i might go idle for a second or two it's not the prettiest um now the reason why i'm pulling out my scouts in the middle this early is because sometimes you will you will find yourself coming out here and you'll be waiting for your gold to come in because it's it sometimes you know your, your imperial official micro might not be the best uh and so as a result they just stay out there ready to go uh now i'm going to bring all of my villagers off uh off food now that i have uh aged up to the next age or now that i'm aging up to the next age dropping down that imperial academy as or that imperial academy uh, using that imperial official to collect taxes she's free to do whatever she wants to do now she can just go follow her heart that sort of good stuff but we are about to have an age up coming through now you can see that we are about to be population blocked. Uh, so this is this is my mistake here. So yeah, let, let's switch this around. Let's let's make it so that you go for a house instead of a lumber camp here. Uh, but now going to aggro the boar with the scouts. That's very key. And then pull it back a little bit. And then move all the scouts up into Mel or, or, all the villagers into melee range. We're going to send out our imperial official into the into the middle of the map because she doesn't really have too much to do right now. She's collected all the tax. There's no you know big serious worker clumps that we've got going. Um, I've got uh, all of my villagers here are now going to be rallied over towards the wood this is very key i accidentally attack moved my scouts there um, and we're going to be putting down that mill uh so making sure that we are we're, we're relatively tucked in uh towards that barbican ideally you'd like to be right up against it so a bit of a mistake coming out from me we're keeping our two villagers on gold imperial official he's about to come out or sh yeah he's about to come out the second one and we're not going to research survival techniques we don't need survival techniques it, we have more than enough food. As you can see, dropping off now, we go up to 247 food there. Uh, now we've got our little Imperial official out. Uh, he is going to be uh, supervising on the, um, the, uh, the mine, uh, not the mining camp, the lumber camp. And we're going to be sending out, we're going to be sending our wood to the absolute moon. So you'll be familiar with the Guz build order, the Rus build order, where you get the early double broad axe. It's the exact same thing here. And where the Rus have got the wooden fortress that not only protects their villages, but it also gives that 20% bonus. We've just got the Imperial official, which still gives that 20% bonus. So we're still matching the Rus economy with this build order. So now double broad axe coming in about six minutes. You can see we've got our archery range up. We're going to start making archers with this as well. And now this is where we start working towards our uh, our dynasty. So you can see we've been a little bit open in this position uh, you know, uh, for the last maybe minute or so. If, if you're up against a French player, there's the potential risk uh, that you might be having a knight in the base, something like that. So it might be a good idea to chuck an outpost on your wood line. But now uh, we're dropping down that village. This village is, it has been brought down uh, from the Song Dynasty down to the Tang Dynasty, which means that we can actually build it without reaching that next dynasty. So it's really, really important that you try and get that as quickly as possible. And this is this is the best way to do it in the build order. Obviously, you could just make one at the beginning of the game, but it's a huge use of resources and it's probably not worth it so now you start to see that we are beginning to stack up our resources uh, in doing this we can begin to add in a secondary production facility but we're going to be using our imperial officials to buff up our, our production facilities and at the moment we're we're in a chill sort of stage why are we chilling out in this stage well the the resources in the middle of the map they can't be touched because there's a barbican sitting on top of that ball now yes we are against an ai uh, here an intermediate ai just to preserve the integrity of this build order that i'm showing you guys uh, but we're also going to just drop an outpost down on the the um the wood line as well just to provide a little bit of safety against any potential raids that might come in this one can obviously be added in a lot earlier if you want to probably want to add it in after the village though now collecting the resources for our next landmark because it is about to happen we are going to be going for that next landmark now i, I think i used three villages for this landmark uh the the dynasty that it's going to take us up to the song dynasty for the imperial academy uh, and so we're going to be putting it very carefully behind the town center now take a look at this base building this is really important when it comes to chinese base building you you typically want your uh, imperial academy right snug up against the back side of your town center so think about like where is your enemy and then think about you know 
position away from them. You don't want it towards the front, typically. Uh, and at the same time, you want your uh, your infrastructure at the front. So you can see I've got my two archery ranges sitting right up against the town center. And that is because I'm not going to be making any farms around this town center whatsoever. Now, at the same time, I've been, uh, I've been making just archers nonstop. You can see I've still got eight villagers here on food at this point in time. I mean, we're eight minutes into the game. The same eight villagers that were on food at the very beginning that we gave a little control group to, they are still the only ones that are on food. And now with this transition period coming through, we are going to be entering the next phase. So what I'll do is I'll just, we'll, we'll just pause it right here. I'll bring it back up for you guys. So you can see we've got that second Imperial official out. You can see we've got the double broad axe. We've got that village. Now we're going for the Song Dynasty and we're going to be looking to get plus one as well as start making Chokunu. So let's have a look exactly how it's done so uh, at, at this point in time rallying to wood is really important but because we're going up to the the uh, song dynasty we're moving villages to gold as well so you can see now we've gone six villages to gold this is to help support our chokunu addiction as well as get that plus one ranged it's going to take a little bit more resources now we're going to have our imperial officials working the whole time but with six villages on gold you should actually be able to get all of your upgrades uh, not just military military upgrades but also your economic upgrades as well uh, so now the chokunu are coming you can see them there two of them in queue uh, and we're just going to drop down that uh, we, we couldn't there wasn't really a good place for this one typically you'd want to put it on the one tile right on the corner of your imperial academy but that is um it, it's not necessary uh it's not always going to happen it's, it's very hard to, to make that work uh but now we see it coming through and now we're supervising both of the archery ranges so right here this is the equivalent of i i'm pretty confident it's about five archery ranges it's between five and six archery ranges i haven't done the math on it exactly but imperial officials were nerfed uh, in the most recent patch uh, now, one of the other things to note is that we're not adding in any more lumber camps at the moment because this lumber camp, uh, if I if I remember correctly, should be safely inside uh, the. Oh, okay, there, there it is. Never mind. Uh, the, this imperial uh, or the, this lumber camp uh, wasn't actually inside the imperial academy influence, so we're just going to add in a second. Uh, lumber camp because normally you would want to be getting that improved tax amount but not going to happen here now with the villages i did move out to hunt initially here uh, but i just decided to go for the closer food source because i haven't researched survival techniques now if you were gonna research survival techniques if you wanted to transition into and i, I will actually pause it here because we can start talking about transitions but let's say you're up against a a civilization like the Rus, like the french that have got knights available in age two or let's say your enemy is just making a hell of a lot of horsemen and you're not comfortable just making chokunu against that well maybe what you want to do is start getting out some spears and this is the first transition so we'll, we'll take a look uh just after this at how much food is out or, or is sitting in our base at the moment it's a huge amount because we've got sheep as well as the berries but in the event that things go sour with that we're also going to be able to transition over to granaries which are the brand new building i say brand new building it's mainly because we've never really used the yuan dynasty before but it's, it is the brand new building uh, that is going to be available to you in the song dynasty so let's keep going let's watch uh, you can see me moving over there towards the uh, the berries now i'm going to be supervising that one up and double choku new production can continuing to to come out uh, making sure that i keep an imperial official um you know on on those archery ranges at all time we're still continuing now we fall into a bit of a lull because because our villagers uh on the boar ran out of food uh we had to move them and now you can see our food resources are completely stagnant uh and so recognizing this i, I decide well hold on a minute let's just get over there uh let us uh, let's work that out finally the food comes in and that's obviously being supervised by the official as well so we're getting increased uh, gather rate from that so this is really like just an absolute insane build order because you're able to take all of your resources and just you know have a, a crazy amount more than what a normal civilization would uh, we see that plus one coming in and if you're in a, if you're stuck in a feudal fight with any civilization and you've got steeled arrows on your chokunu they're pretty much going to be able to win every single battle they're, i don't think there's a unit that actually beats them in the second age just because of it now we see the granary now granary placement my opinion the very back tile so that you see that little tile that i was hovering over right there uh, that is the best spot for the granary so putting that down uh, so you essentially want to put your granaries down. Uh, my understanding is is on those tiles uh, because you're going to be having a, a really uh, a huge amount of space in between that you can actually fit enough farms in between as well. And that that's it. There you guys go. Uh, that that is where the recording is finished. Uh, so I'm going to take you back over here. Geez, I could have talked all day for for that. So we'll put that back into into full screen for you guys. Um, but that is essentially it. So um, you, you start off with a scout. You working up to your imperial official. You're going to research wheelbarrow. You take 
take the boar in the first age. You're taking control of the boar in the first age. Once age two hits, you're getting that second imperial official out, making sure you research double broad axe and adding in villages wherever you need them. Uh, so keep in mind, you can garrison inside villages. So don't be afraid to add them. Uh, you know, we, we moved onto that berry patch. Don't be afraid to drop down a village out there because that's a very, uh, a, a very, vol a very vulnerable area. Uh, then we move into the Imperial Academy and then finally uh, beginning to make Chokunu and as well getting that Steeled Arrow upgrade. Now the first transition that you've got, you saw it there, it was transition one. It was where we go for granaries. We look to add in more food heavy units because eight villages on food is all we need to sustain Chokunu production and villager production. We don't need more than that. That is perfect. That, that is absolutely fine for us. But if you want to start adding in spears, if you want to start adding in horsemen, then by all means, start focusing more heavily on those sheep, on those berries that were in your base, and then eventually begin adding in granaries because these things, I mean, I haven't done the math on them. Somebody on Reddit did. They said they're not too bad, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of the ways that China is actually able to to maintain a very good gold income in the late game, similar to what the English can. So I would advocate for them uh, just because it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be uh, keeping all your gold income in that one building making it very easy for your imperial officials. Transition number two, uh, it is a, a castle age transition. So you could probably look look to this transition, maybe about 13 minutes uh, would be reasonable. And the idea would be that you would go up and you would immediately research veteran Chokunu as well as researching the plus two. So I think it's called balance projectiles, uh, the plus two ranged attack. This takes your Chokunu up to seven damage per attack, which gives their volley a total damage of 21. So as an example, a knight with plus two armor has has uh, six armor in total because it has a base of four. Uh, so your enemy would need to be in castle age and they would need to research plus two ranged armor for you to be doing the minimum amount of damage. So if you can get up ahead of your enemy and you can get this, it's a massive power spike for you. But essentially, it, it, it I, I appreciate that it is a very complicated build order. You saw there, it's, it compare that to the guards build where it's like, okay, I'm just going to rally every villager to food except for the first two, which go to wood. And then when I age up, I'm going to move a, a couple more across to wood. Like this is very complex. There's villagers going everywhere. You're constantly doing stuff i do appreciate that but i do think this has got the the potential uh to change the way that china is played because once you take that boar then you are not only denying it from your enemy but you're keeping it for yourself and you're actually getting a use out of your barbican because right now it's a glorified outpost but at least if you put it in the middle of the map there's no real way that your enemy is going to be challenging you in that position but there you go fellas i hope you guys have enjoyed this brand new look at the or rather this first look at the brand new chinese build order for the latest patch thank you so much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one and of course custard